What's up everyone? This is Landriders 7th, aka LR7, or Land for short. I'm just uh, back here in the ship. Due to a few technical difficulties I've been having on my end, uh, trying to adjust a few a few settings in my stream, and uh, letting this guy know that I'm live now, and and it was just uh, trying to figure out a few things here, but looks like I got looks like I got this figured out, and uh, it's so it seems. Hopefully, hopefully everybody can hear me, and hopefully everything is is good to go. Anyways, uh, there's been a couple of topics I wanted to get into, and while I'm while I'm practicing or regaining my editing skills while I'm at it, because it's been such a long time since I've done editing here, I'm gonna see what I can make here. I may have to uh, practice a little more to kind of get familiar. It's like I will. I I started out doing great, built all the. It'll be you probably find it hard to believe that I created a lot of this with pr with pr high quality editing, but right now I'm kind of back to noob level. Cause it really has been that long since I've done any editing. But I'm very sure if I spend some time here, I'll be able to come back to be my pro self again. <laughs> and start make getting this ship done all right now all right today's topic privacy issues it comes in many different shapes and sh sizes and rain and it's one of the biggest ones going on t in today's uh world is online privacy yes the things that you do over the internet. Big Brother w is watching you on your web browser. Hmm. Talking about 1983 making a comeback in the modern world. And ever since, and of course, uh, one of the big guys that kind of started this, or or at least uh, kind of made it known is uh, the NSA lately uh, it wasn't it, it's not really anything new it's this online privacy issue has been going on for quite some time already since the dawn of the internet so it's just uh, been a little uh, it's just been recognized by by the but all thanks to a guy named Edward Snowden the guy who uh, who supposedly had exposed uh, this uh, just these guys the NSA about their online uh, online stalking of users without their consent and pretty much what they're doing is relatively illegal and uh, and and they could potentially they should potentially get arrested for such a such atrocities or even or even worse <laughs> don't really want to mention that right now but but anyways uh well we're what I'm what I'm coming here is uh there's been a couple of online breaches especially uh especially uh these the government supposedly wanting to spy on their citizens as well as uh, spying on foreign foreign uh, countries alike just to find out what they're up to or even worse coming up with some excuses like oh it's just for your own protection or even for uh, even to protect you from from online terrorism or some ex lame excuse like that Here's the thing. You can't always take everything so seriously on the internet. Everybody has access to it and just about anybody can 
be whoever they want to be, really. They can choose who they want to to do to or to even or to even act or even to be a fictional character or or even any kind of character and people will will recognize you as such. So anyways, uh jeez, I I better stop using that word. Again, not perfect in speaking, but and but it's all good. I'm just uh practicing here and there. So, anyways, on So as this online privacy issue has been going on for a while and it's been pushed on to even your own computer ever since the release of Windows 10. Well, actually Windows 8 to be exact. There's their new operating system has done some very questionable things. So as in this their updates really and the fa and if you're a Windows 7 or an 8 user, you see the you see this little pop-up on the corner of your of your uh desk bar where it shows your time and shows your little icons like your volume or your or your internet or your other little things or the little flag for Windows users where where it shows the Windows 8 or 10 logo saying update to this new OS now can you? Microsoft has a way of of giving you a free update and better yet sometimes they don't even give you the choice and even if you thought oh cool a free update the next thing you know once you would once you download it and install it on your computer one of two things can happen either your computer is rendered useless due to missing drivers or you didn't like you didn't like how the update went and therefore rendering your computer your computer as a as a complete uh, complete uh, failure or even or even uh, the certain programs you normally would use on that OS just stops working now what kind of improvement is that Microsoft seriously is that what you're planning to do with uh, with your updates and your your tactics of trying to get people to use your new OS more in order to in order to sell your services because apparently if it's you find it more convenient to do so ridiculous however there has been a couple of new uh, however it's not always uh th always that bad or at least their OS or there's or the new windows isn't necessarily necessarily the worst i mean there has been a couple of improvements in speed and and uh some features being brought back after after the windows 8 failure so so the start menu for in windows 8 and 8.1 not a whole lot of people got used to it and uh especially those that aren't using tablets I had find it difficult to use like myself that could barely get used to it in them well ever since Windows 8 uh, came out I became a formal an official Linux user thanks to that so I guess Microsoft kinda did did some good things and one of them was to make me use Linux as my main system more Th there are times that I will still use uh, Windows for other things but that's because I'm 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 still using uh, that OS for certain programs or I'm still in the development of creating my OS or adjusting my Linux uh, system but that's but that's okay I mean I uh, Windows 7 will still receive updates for for a, f a few more years, but that doesn't but that doesn't change the fact that that the privacy uh, the privacy issues won't go away. I mean, 
I mean, we, Windows 7 still has a few good hidden uh, privacy issues as well. So one of the so my best suggestion, if you want to get rid of these uh, these uh, hidden uh, key loggers or or I should say spyware that Microsoft has in their OSs by default, there should be a program name. Uh, I believe it's called the it's called something by by search and destroy beacon or privacy beacon of some or something of that sort where where I believe it it's a little program that disables these uh these hidden uh privacy issues that Microsoft have installed by default where all you have to do is uh is is open up that program and apply to those to those settings that that are of currently on your computer and from there it should uh it should make it a, it should make it a little more difficult for Microsoft to spy on you or that's what I or that's what I uh, heard it that it does so you know just in case in the future uh Microsoft decides to go as far as turning in your information, your private information to the authorities, cause, um, cause they want to find the the criminal. And what what better way to find the criminal by starting with their computer, of what of the evidence they could be hiding there, or the or the thing or the pieces of it, content they've been looking for and decide to dig into it without any of your consents so you're gonna wanna question yourself this am I really safe with this update or updates or the tactics Microsoft had used in the kind of information I put into my computer or even online for instance, and is it uh, and is it okay for is it for okay for somebody that you don't even know, never met, to look into your computer and and look in through your through your uh, personal stuff like, let's say your social security, your password to one of your social media sites or or even your password to your to your let's say YouTube or or Tumblr or Snapchat or even or even uh, some questionable websites you go to do you really want them to know your password and and only for the excuse of like or their excuse of if you are not doing anything wrong, you and ha then you shouldn't worry about having anything to hide. I wouldn't. Th I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't be okay with that if I were you. But that's totally up to you if you want to. If you don't really care about about people looking to your private stuff, because believe me, when you do stuff that's considered private to you think of it as somebody looking through uh, through you remotely or or even through the through your window of when you're taking a, a shower now how would you like somebody to look at you while while you're showering that you don't approve of well you're gonna want to treat it like that when you're on the internet so so if I were you, my best bet, you're going to want to develop some new uh, internet habits or some safer ones. The good news is you're able to combat that. And what better way to do that than to have some extensions or add-ons. For instance, Firefox has some very good privacy add-ons and, and I'm and I'm a Formal Firefox user myself, been using 
Firefox uh, for quite a while. It's helped me a lot, and it's done the job. I mean, surely it's it may not be the most convenient or the quickest or 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 uh, uh, what would most people say the the prettiest or even or even the lag free. But but here's the thing. One of the reasons why Firefox didn't work out for you could be a could be uh could be three things. Either you're using plugins that are outdated that aren't currently working for your for that version of Firefox. So or you might have some uh some toolbars that you've been wondering how that appeared and and the reason why you thought were you thought you thought that could have helped your your browsing experience better is is by having them around and and you're probably wondering why is my my internet going so slow maybe it's your your internet speeds or maybe it's that add-on that you that you allowed a website to install without you realizing it so my best suggestion is uh, to clean up your your browser, internet history, your cookies, or clean out your your cache. Clean out even even though those uh, those things that you had downloaded or installed onto your browser. Might as well get rid of those entirely. And my suggestion is replace it for something like. For no script, if you're if you're really that paranoid, or you just simply want things to load faster, or or you just want things to just not pop up like that, which also helps with your online privacy, may not be the most convenient uh, method. If you're if if it if having to click on the allow scripts every time you visit a website annoys you, believe me. It's believe me, it may be annoying, but that's the best way to to really prevent those uh those pesky little ads or or scripts to to have a good chance to spy on you. And it can also speed up your your loading time when you go on a website a little better. So so that would be an add on I would recommend. But but if you're not into into having to click on right click on the add-on just to allow some stuff and oh hello another guy here suggested ad block plus actually that's actually quite helpful as well the reason why I don't really use ad block is it, it for some weird reason it kinda slows slows down my browser I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, my computer. Maybe it's uh, just just the way I do things on my browser, or or who knows. I mean, I'm not saying that it's uh, bad or anything. I mean, as a matter of fact, if if it works out for you, then that'll be great. Whatever whatever works to prevent ads or even or even uh, websites from spying on you or getting to know to know a little bit more of what you don't want anyone else to know he help in pretty much uh pretty much unblocking those scripts another another add-on that I would also recommend is uh, privacy badger that one is a little simpler to use and and that that and you don't really have to use go into it as much but for some websites, you may need to uh, right-click on the on the Badger icon on your browser in order to enable certain things. Because keep in mind, not all the scripts that are going on the internet when you browse on a on a website are necessarily spying on you. It could be it could be that they have a little video that it loads that the add-on had recognized as a script, and it's just been designed to block it by default where you have the choice to enable it if you like which normally that's what I would do if I know what I'm what I'm up to 
However, how would you know when and when not to enable a script? Well, that's a uh, that's something I'd like to uh, tell you. And there's a uh, and there's an add-on called Woot, short for Web of Trust, which is a reputation add-on that that allows anybody to rate the website or even tell speak their opinion or even their experience about about that website which also gives you a good insight on how on how that website is so so I would I would normally check on that in order to determine if a website is trustworthy or so or if there's more people complaining of oh man this website has been giving me trouble oh, or this website is a scam don't don't go don't fall for it or other times uh, other times they having technical difficulties or oh and uh, not to mention there's also some some trolls that will either give it a bad rating on, rating on purpose or they would claim that the website is is good when really it's malicious but they don't want to tell you that because they want to promote promote it as a good site well a, a way to come back at that doesn't necessarily have to be a script or a add-on the best this actually applies for offline use as well. The best way to to fight back or to not let something like that affect you is common sense. That's your best weapon against uh, against uh, falling victim under under what you do online or even what you decide to to give out when you go on a certain website. Or if you want somebody to know to know certain things, so if you're willing to trust that person with that kind of information, that's totally up to you. So, so that would be one of the one of the best ways to to fight online privacy, or or online privacy violators I would say rather it's a government a corporation a hacker even a stalker your best bet is a is a browser with better privacy settings and don't forget the add-ons and as well as uh, a few little a few changes on on your internet habits oh and uh, and if you're if you really want to take this to another level of privacy or if you or if or if an add-on isn't enough for you fortunately there there's uh there's another solution which kind of re requires some technical know-how called proxies if you want to know what a proxy is, a proxy is a is a is a is a is a line or I how should I say this? How should I explain it in simple terms? It's like a like another another client or a or a server where you type in a certain IP address and the computer will connect to that particular client or server in order to be able to mask your 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 I let's say your ID computer's ID or your phone's I, your phone's uh, ID or identification the best way I can I can explain it in order to hook up to the internet or at least for your computer to have to have a means to get there IP which is uh, which is internet protocol is also something you use in order to connect to a certain computer Maybe it's not necessarily for computers. It can also be for connecting servers, or even, or even, or even when you start an online server, you also need to know what kind of IP to connect. Even, even this game on this on this server I in requires an IP 
the reason why you're able why it shows up as a name and not and not as an as a few numbers with dots on it is cuz it's cuz it uses a do it's how should i say this a domain name well in this case uh we're not talking about websites we're talking about servers or or internet protocols in general which kind of relates to websites but we're just going but we'll cover that later and i the proxy proxy basically allows your computer or or should i say the client to connect to that specific device or or server to in order to communicate on what information to send or what what things to to kind of mess it, uh, send back and forth for that ip to be read by other people you either have to give it out or for the technical side of things you got to you're going to have to go to a command line and type in a certain command i believe in linux you have to type in something like like i believe it's if uh ip config or on windows it's uh P i believe it's something something similar of that sort i can't remember by the top of my head i'm a little i'm kind of a little forgetful sometimes but but then that's because i don't really use that you go by those things much or really bother them shame on me i should have had gone to that but the best way the best way i would uh i would uh i would explain it is your internet id or a means to connect from one device to another in order to be able to hide that identif identification or make it harder for somebody to look for you online or rather you're using that specific computer is through uh is through a a, a is through a method which I would say a VP or a or a, a means to do it called a VPN. There are many different VPNs to choose from, and there are many uses of a VPN. Rather, it's for sending information back and forth, or simply browsing through an unsecure network in order to be able to exchange uh, confidential information from one end to another. And uh, and it's mostly being used by businesses, by companies, or, or by the, or simply by, by the average household user that really wants to keep their their connection uh, private or away from prying eyes. There's also another a program that does that does more than just hide your your IP called Tor. Tor, or the Onion Router for short, is a is a protocol that, not a protocol, but a but a but a proxy that allows you to dig to go even deeper into the internet that's not found by any search engine. So in ca so if you have seen some uh some some of some of my how to on how to access access the deep webs as well as anonymously accessing the internet that's the program I had used in order to to go into the deep webs or even dig into to these uh hidden websites which uh, which their URLs by the end of by the end goes by Dot onion. Those websites cannot be accessed by a normal browser. You and you either have to use the Tor bundle, or you have to configure your browser in order to connect to that to those particular websites. There should be a tutorial on how to do that in one in in one of my uh, in my channel in order to be able to do that yourself. Keep in mind this is all this. This is only on Linux. I don't. I do not recommend browsing the deep webs when you're on Windows, Mac, or even Google, Google Chrome. At all, trust me. Trust me. It's for it's for your it's for the sake of your own privacy. Unless you really don't care about 
about that and you want somebody to know about it, well, all I can say is uh, good luck and hopefully you don't get caught while you're at it. So that would be one of the one of the more hardcore ways of keeping your online browsing confidential as well as digging a little deeper into that into that hidden hidden web which I also like to which I also like to um, to uh, explore later on so in other words uh, another another thing I would like to uh, take care of is uh, is a couple of other pro uh, uh, privacy issues that doesn't necessarily reflect on the internet uh, or even uh, or even through a particular computer use so also looks like I got a few people coming in it's been a while haven't seen some of the some of these guys here looks like they're making a come back and uh, and I'm just uh, kind of a little busy talking about my uh, about about the topic here but anyways uh, back to where I was so if you guys are listening or happen to hear me while I'm streaming you, you can go ahead and let me know that let me know otherwise I'll just continue on talking definitely need to change a couple of things around here Maybe include an IRC chat, or even, even a, or even a Skype, Google Hangouts, or even a, a peer dot in method of being able to communicate with you guys while I'm talking about stuff or even doing some editing. So difficult to do so. I guess you are, uh, kind sir. But that's okay. It's this is going to be archived anyways. Anyways, back to where I was talking about. There's also this offline privacy issue that also exists as well. It could be, it could start out as a rumor, or it could start out as somebody deciding to dig into your, into your stuff without their consent. Or it could even be somebody force forcing forcing you to do something that you that against your will, or somebody that you gave no permission to, but they still decide to get into anyways. So, so believe me, it it, it ain't pretty when somebody wants to know about your private stuff that you gave no permission uh, to know or but they decided to snatch your stuff or even look into it thinking you know what I wanna know so I demand so I demand an answer all you're going to do is cause a problem so so if you wanted to know something or if you really want to know something so badly you're gonna have to ask permission and if that person doesn't allow you or still says no you're just gonna have to respect respect that person's answer and just move along you're gonna have to resist that curiosity otherwise what kind of respect are you giving that person by snatching their stuff like that so so offline privacy comes in many shapes and sizes as well. It could be, it could be that you left a password on a on a sticky note, and and without your notice, or you probably didn't don't realize the password is right on the wall somewhere of the pers of the person or the guest you invite in, and they decided to look into it real quick. And if you purposely allowed somebody to, to look look into into the pa that piece of paper and copy that password, then that's no problem at all because you chose to have that person know about about that password in order to connect or or even to use something or maybe or maybe you just want that 
intentionally want that person to know. So, sorry about that. Knocked out my my mic for a bit. So, any so anyhow, for those that for those that uh, does certain things like. Some people has the has the habit of forgetting their password. So if you're going to if you really want to uh, keep your password from anyone else knowing about it, my best suggestion is to have some good memory memorizing skills, or you f you find a place to where only you can access and no one else can or even attempt to look into it. Or if you want to keep certain things confidential, don't t don't go out telling people like that. Cuz chances are if if this person isn't considered trustworthy, maybe it's most likely that some things may slip through and you're pr and the next thing you know that person knows that piece of information and you're wondering, how do they know that? And then the next thing and there's only one one way they could know about it, and it could be the person that you told that per that told it him or her about to th that that you told them not to tell anyone else about it. That could be another form of a privacy breach, or you, or simply something you just don't want the other person to know. So the next time you really, the next time you decide to to give some information like that or or trust somebody with with some personal info or if you really want to prevent a rumor from starting just don't just don't tell that person you may as well keep it to yourself until it is safe to do so or don't send any pri or don't send any private uh, private information while you're thinking that you can get away with it. Rather, it's from the internet or even for offline use. But but common sense is your best uh, defense. And. And as much as I'd like to talk about more, more about online privacy or offline privacy or any other kind of privacy issue, I'm gonna have to take a, I'm gonna have to stop from here because uh, looks like my time is out is running out. Well, not really running out, but I believe this video is long enough and too much talking and not so much uh, interaction has been going on. But anyways, uh, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed en enjoyed uh, this uh, stream or video or me talking about stuff. Although I'm not interacting with you guys cause much because I don't have a a, me a better method, or I'm not even uh, looking on my Twitch right now or on my other on my other sites. So perhaps in the future I might develop or even find a better way to engage with you guys or simply have you guys talk about stuff on your end after all this is kind of this is pretty much the goal of what I'm aiming for for this uh, for these uh, live streams when they when they do go live and I really hope I can come up I can we can all come up with something better and hopefully hopefully have some stuff done in the ship later on till then you got you guys uh hopefully you hopefully you have better ideas of your own and and you can help out contribute for the ship a bit or even come up with with some new topics to talk about for later shows and also and also also help me out by supporting me in uh in uh you know in in s you know, just give just give out some feedback. Like, for instance, this guy down here on my chat. I don't think you can see, but but he says dual screens plus having someone over Skype helps. Actually, that's a good idea. 
I would like to set up a Skype session later on or or even or even Google Hangouts or or kind of more than one way to communicate and figure out how to bring them everyone together in that way. But that's going to be for future for future uh streams. Till then, I I shall stop from here before I start going overboard. And of course, you guys have a great afternoon, evening, night, or wherever you are in the world. And till then, this is LR7 logging out.